In Uganda, almost 40 million people live far away from cities and often have hours to walk to the nearest hospital. Even though stroke is one of the leading causes of disability and death, most people don't know the signs. They often can't recognize the disease in time and its consequences dramatically affect the entire family. Our brain needs a constant flow of blood in order to get oxygen and nutrients. A stroke occurs when blood flow is blocked or when a vessel is bleeding. Brain cells start to die within minutes, affecting a person's movement, speech and ability to think. Knowing about risk factors is the first step in preventing stroke. You can begin with managing your daily habits and monitoring your blood pressure and blood sugar levels. When stroke happens, urgent medical treatment is necessary to minimize the damage. But many people don't come to hospitals in time. Research shows that people tend to choose non-medical treatments in the first place. When somebody has been hit by stroke, normally the, the next thing they run to is the traditional healers. So how can we raise awareness about stroke and build efficient solutions for recovery? The first step is to understand how people live and how they support each other in their village. Nice to meet you, sir. How are you, Mr. I'm so grateful that you are a part of the family in this project about how it is to live with the consequences of stroke in this country. You are giving us that knowledge, so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. This opportunity to engage with families affected by stroke was made possible through collaboration with AMSO, an organization that works to improve health and well-being in Africa through research, training and community service. They have given us a possibility to follow people in these different sites that they have where they collect data to try to understand the people's lived experiences in different contexts. In areas with no access to rehabilitation centers, stroke becomes a burden for the entire family. Their only path to recovery is home-based care given by family members. Here you don't have a system with support in the same way. The children might need even to leave the work for going and take care of the parents. Despite everyday struggles, pain, and the fight for recovery, this family shows an incredible resilience. Since village healthcare workers are the first point of contact, it is important to train them to recognize stroke symptoms We've been able to train community health workers who often remit these patients in their homes uh, and they are able to support them, do some exercises to help them cope with the disease. Stroke doesn't just damage the body, it also deeply affects self-esteem. Many survivors lose their independence and feel cut off from their communities. But researchers have uncovered a surprising solution. Mobile phones and SMS services can support recovery and help to re-engage with the community. When I came here, I saw there were long distance with a few rehabilitation clinics. It was very few rehabilitation staff, but they had a lot of mobile phones and they were really skilled. If we can be intentional as a government, as, as a country, reach out to all communities, and give them the information about stroke. Also, if we could use the system uh, of SMS to remind people to do their everyday activities, the goals that they have been setting by using the Ministry of Health platform, that I think we could make a change together. While this initiative has great potential for positive change, we all need to know the first signs of stroke. They can be different depending on which part of the brain is affected. If you see any of these signs, go to the hospital immediately, even if the symptoms disappear. Face drooping. Ask the person to smile. 
one side of their face will droop. Arm weakness. Ask the person to raise both arms. One arm can't be lifted properly. Speech difficulties. Ask the person to repeat a simple phrase. Time to call emergency services.